Seiko. My name is Malcolm Paulus Lines. Welcome to part two of my presentation on the armor of the Iroquoian peoples. In the following video, I will show off my recreation in more detail and discuss some of the practical elements of the armor. To begin with, we have the helmet. It is constructed from six rings of wooden plates. The helmet is constructed from hickory, oak, and ash. Each ring of wood is joined to the others by two bands of leather, one on the inside, one on the outside. The helmet is sewn with sinew. The inside of the helmet is constructed like a simple four-panel cap. The top is stuffed with corn husks. These act as a decorative plume, but also provide some cushioning. The helmet weighs about one pound, ten ounces. Now we look at the shin guards. These are made from oaken splints sewn with jute. Of note is the hole placement. Every hole is a weak spot, so by staggering them like this, you prevent any one spot from being overly weakened. The slats are all chamfered so that the armor will conform to the curvature of your leg. Note the degree of flexion when held open compared to when I close it up. Also of note are some hollowed out sections for the ankle bone. These are essential for comfort. The shin guards can be simply tied on with a bow. They each weigh just a little over a pound. The two shin guards roll up together very neatly for storage. Now the breastplate. This is constructed from oak, ash, and hickory slats woven together with cords. Historically these cords would have been made from milkweed or sinew. Sinew is quite expensive and milkweed's hard to come by and you need a heck of a lot of cord for these. Living in the modern world, I cheated and used sisal garden twine. The paint is clay mixed with rust, my attempt at making fake ochre. The breastplate is rimmed with deerskin. The top and sides are rimmed to prevent them chafing against my body. The bottom is rimmed to prevent it from catching when it slides over the apron. The apron is only rimmed at the top. This is the only place where it contacts my body. The slats of the apron are wider at the bottom than they are at the top. This prevents the cords from slipping off. The breastplate and apron together weigh a little over seven pounds. The armor panels are quite flexible. However, there is a limit to how tightly they can curve. This is one of the reasons why the shin guards are constructed differently from the breastplate. Something interesting I discovered is that when you roll up the breastplate, the hole is just about big enough to fit the shin guards in nicely. The helmet can then be stuck on top to keep everything from unrolling. Neat. Now here's the back plate. It's constructed in the same way as the breastplate, the only difference being that I used pine wood here rather than hardwood. The back is much less likely to be hit than the front, so I can afford a little less protection. Pine is much lighter than the hardwood. The wings of the backplate are a pair of separate plates attached by leathers. It allows the wings to move with the arms without impeding your movement. It also allows the backplate, when removed, to be set up like a medieval pavise. Backplate overall weighs about 6 pounds, 10 ounces. It makes me so happy that everything fits together like this. When rolled up, the shoulder straps allow the armor to be carried like a suitcase. So let's see how long it takes to put on this armor. I realize this bit may not be interesting to all of you, so you can skip ahead by clicking 655. I'm going to start with the shin guards. These are more difficult to put on once you have the breastplate on, so the shin guards go first. These are fastened on with just a pair of bows, one above the ankle and one below the knee. Riveting stuff, this. Let's throw some background music under this, just for fun. Turns out even simple knots are tricky when you can't see what you're doing. Oy vey, man. Could you go any slower? Don't you know you're on camera? Bloody time. Now that's done, onto the breastplate. 
breastplate is very easy to put on. It can simply be slung over the shoulders like an apron. The helmet is snug enough that I don't need any straps. It can just sit on the top of my head. The breastplate doesn't prevent me from bending over. However, it does swing forward and make it difficult to pick things up. The back plate can be worn just like a backpack. The only consideration is that I have to get my arm through both sets of shoulder straps at the same time. And there we go, armored up. It took me about two and a half minutes, but I could have done it faster. Let's see how long it takes me to get out of it. paying for my bad knots here. I tied something that wasn't quite a bow. Less than a minute, even with my setback. One of my questions is how difficult is it to run in this armor? I could imagine the backplate catching a lot of wind. However, except on extremely windy days, I haven't found this to be a problem. Now let's take a look at mobility in this armor. Shooting a bow is important for a warrior, so let's try that first. I didn't notice any restriction in my archery ability. The only thing I could think of is that I don't know where you would carry a quiver in armor like this. Maybe it could be sewn to the backplate in some way. Here I try various archery poses just to see how the armor moves. Kneeling archery is a little bit awkward. The skirt gets in the way a little bit. Here we see some of the weaknesses of my recreation. When shooting arrows head-on, the left side of my chest is exposed through a gap between the breastplate and backplate. This could be resolved by adding another small plate under the armpit. This plate could be sewn to the existing straps and wouldn't impede mobility to any significant degree. Note how the backplate allows me to ready another arrow without exposing any of my upper body. Can you string and unstring a bow in armor like this? Yes. Yes, you can. How about climbing? A little more difficult, but not too bad. The apron means you can't use your legs properly while climbing, but other than that, it's quite feasible. The full suit of armor weighs a little over 17 pounds. For comparison, my coat of chainmail weighs 28 pounds. Not too much extra weight, all things considered. Arm range of motion. I can cross my arms almost as far as normal. The breastplate is able to collapse inwards. Mostly it just takes a little bit more effort. I can raise my arms up high, and I can bend over. I can kneel without difficulty, either leg. Let's say that I got knocked down. How difficult would it be to get back up? The back plate prevents me from simply sitting up. I have to roll over onto my front. Once on my front, getting up is easy. 
falling prone and then getting back up. No trouble. Here I'm swinging a war club to see if it impedes my mobility. Nope. Here I show what I believe to be the primary function of the wings. When advancing like this, only one eye is left exposed. This also shows a couple of shortcomings of my recreation. If the wings were a few slats wider, they would cover the exposed elbow. If the apron was a few slats wider, it would cover the exposed portion of my thigh. Swinging the war club a little more to see if there's any angle that is impeded. Note how when I make a big swing, my side is briefly exposed. No restriction, though it does take a little bit more effort to raise my arms high. How about jumping? Not great, but I can still do it. Here's another function of the back plate. It can be removed and set on the ground as a small mantlet. If you had enough of these, they could serve as a sort of mobile fortification. It can also be picked up and used as a large shield. It's a little bit awkward when used like this. A purpose-built shield would be better, but it works well enough. And I can think of a number of situations in which I'd want to do this. It gets in the way a little bit and prevents swings from a couple of angles, but not too bad. You can see how the shield covers almost my entire body when used like this. Now I'm trying a spear to see if the armor restricts its use at all, and to see what is exposed through normal spear use. Reading history, it seems that the spear was not a common weapon of war among First Nations peoples. It's easy to find accounts of bows, war clubs, and tomahawks. Spears are more of a rarity. This is interesting to me. Across the pond, right through from the classical era up to the Renaissance, spears were the most commonly used weapon. The reason for this is simple, spears are really good. But if spears were really good, why didn't we make much use of them? Well, my theory is that it's because of the armor that we used. In my tests, I've found stone points to be incredibly fragile when coming up against this armor. It could be that we didn't take stone spears to war because we knew that they couldn't be relied on not to break in the heat of battle. Just a theory. With regards to the durability of this armor, I found it to perform exceptionally well against stone points. Against antler points, the breastplate and backplate are close to 100% proof, and the helmet and shin guards can only be penetrated if the arrow strikes dead center. Against cuts, the armor is close to 100% proof, even from steel weapons such as a modern felling axe. Against blunt force, all elements of the armor perform exceptionally well. The only weapon I've found that can pose a danger to this armor is my steel spear. The spear is slender enough, durable enough, and has enough mass to force its way through. Well, that's it for mobility tests. There's just one last thing I'd like to mention about this armor, that being the intimidation factor. One of the main ways we gauge the threat level of an opponent is by the physicality of said opponent, subconsciously comparing the dimensions of their silhouette to our own. This helmet makes me appear a good foot taller, the backplate makes my shoulders appear broader. It's possible then that this armor makes me appear more intimidating, perhaps even terrifying. Well, for the time being, that's all I have to say. No doubt I'll think of something as soon as I finish publishing this, so there might be another part at some point. But until then, bye-bye.